fam? In today's video, I will be talking about where and when I think there will be a change in the current technology of super shoes on the market. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what each company I believe is trying to achieve when they design a shoe, why they can only design a shoe a certain way, and what changes I think will happen in the future. So super shoes have been all the craze when Nike changed the market and the game around 2017 when they released their Nike Vaporfly 4% shoes. The combination of specialized foams and a carbon fiber plate placed very strategically within the foam has led to an increase of about 4%, hence the name, in performances all across the globe. They looked at Strava data of like thousands of people. They've had a Nike funded study, I believe at uh, UC Boulder to show that you do get about a 4% improvement in race times. And that has raised the question and has caused other companies to try to catch up of whether should this be even legal. Fast forward, it's 2022 at the time of making this video and there have been many companies that have released super shoes to compete with the Nike, Vaporfly, Alphafly, etc. Now, all shoes are trying to achieve one thing, and that is that they are trying to achieve efficiency of energy return and propulsion at the metatarsophalangeal joint of uh, the foot uh, using the shoe, which is about three fourths of the way up from the back. I have the Applefly Next% Percent 2 in my hand just for imagery, but this is right here, right where the midfoot is. Now, companies obviously file patents, right? And they do research on whether, where they should place the plate to be able to sell a shoe that's innovative and says what it's going to do performance wise. Now I heard this somewhere and comment down below if you have, I heard that Nike has the most optimum placement of the plate within the shoe and the density and thickness within the shoe. Nike has pretty much patented every possible combination. I do a video talking about that. I'll link it up in the cards of the Nike Spark Fly in it, which ended up being just a casual shoe. But I do talk about the concept of that in that video, so I'll link it up in the cards. But Nike has the patent of the placement of the plate and the curvature of the plate for optimal energy return and performance. Therefore, no other shoe can keep up with that, I think for like the next 20 years. So pretty much Nike has sent the benchmark when it comes to performance related shoes, um, carbon plated shoes. So there has to be a shift in technology for another company to be able to change that or to get up to Nike when it comes to the design of the shoe. Now we have Adidas, obviously they've had the carbon plated rods, right? Add more flexibility in the forefoot by just having the bendability at the rods and on a full plate, bypassing patents that Nike has set and so they can try to increase performance. Because of patents, shoe companies have to work around. A prime example would be Asics's Metaspeed Sky Plus and Edge Plus, right? The placement of the plate is derogative or derivative, I don't know what the correct word is, of uh, how the flexibility in the forefoot would be, right? So the Metaspeed Sky is more of a marathon shoe, more stiffness, much like the Alpha Fly, less flexibility. Great at the steady state running where steady state is needed versus the Edge, which has more flexibility in the forefoot because the plate is lower to help, you know, for more faster stuff, maybe turns and stuff like that. So they have to work around things. You even got Ultra that's doing, that has like the, um, cause they're so late to the game, they had to like make a way to, I believe they put like a plate in the forefoot, which I don't know what it's called. You got the Puma shoe that has like a split in the middle that you can see the plate to be able to like bypass both Nike and Adidas patents. So eventually there's gonna be so many patents and so much saturation in the carbon plate in the market, there's gonna have to be a change in something. And uh, I do believe we would see new technology in the future and within the next few years. Now, what do I think they will do to change? I think they will do something that will be innovative, that will have more flexibility in the forefoot as you're accelerating, less flexibility with steady state, but that's where I think it's going. I think there will be a change in three years, a massive shift in technology. Will they still be using PBACs? I think they will, it's pretty resilient. Companies are making different composites with PBACs and different uh, densities with PBACs. Carbon fiber, like I have said in the video prior, not all shoes use 100% carbon fiber. There's a different derivative or different percentage of carbon fiber put within the shoe that controls the plate stiffness. So maybe they can add different sheets of different uh, varying degrees of stiffness of how much carbon fiber or um, stacking of plates, not like plates on top of plates, but like different fibers of carbon fiber within a single plane um, to have the shoe 
or the plate bend differently at different points uh, within the shoe. Comment down below if you guys agree or if you have any thoughts. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell when I post my next video. Love you guys. Catch you guys next time. Peace.